So again, I extend my welcome uh, to you here for the dedication of Vesterheim Heritage Park. You know, this park is a milestone in the long history of both Vesterheim and in the history of Decorah. Uh, Vesterheim Park, Heritage Park's connection to the land speaks to the long history of this area. You know, this history predates settlement when this land was the region as, and was home to native tribes such as the Iowa, Meskwaki, Dakota, and in particular the Ho-Chunk who lived in this area. As what would eventually become the state of Iowa began to open up to settlement, this part of Northeast Iowa became known as the neutral ground created by the U.S. government and guarded by nearby Fort Atkinson, which you can go still visit today, to separate and control the movement of native peoples. As time progressed and the pace of settlement quickened, the land's native occupants were forced to move from these homelands and make way for new migrants who would call this area home. In the late 1840s, Yankee settlers from the eastern U.S. began to move into this area that we now call Decorah, which is, of course, named after Ho-Chunk chief Wakan Decorah. With the first waves of Norwegian immigrants soon to follow, Heritage Park helps to tell a story of immigration by Norwegians to America. As we dedicate this park, let us acknowledge the complex history of this land and the people who have lived and worked on it throughout its history. Now this park, the creation of this park would not have been possible without a dedicated team of designers, engineers, contractors, and staff. And I want to express Vesterheim's heartfelt thanks to the design team of this project, which, which included both master plan and design work uh, from teams at Snohetta, as well as, in particular, Joan, Jean, and Jody at Damon Farber Landscape Architects here. And they're in the audience here as well, represented from Snohetta and um, Damon Farber. Vesterheim was also blessed with an excellent general contractor, uh, Chuck Cox with Second Nature Landscaping. Chuck, are you in the audience today here? I don't see him around here. He was so busy putting his heart and soul into this project. We also had a number of other local subcontractors who were involved here. If you look in your program here today, you can see those. Those included um, a number of contractors, including Singing Hammers Construction, David Finholt Construction, Perry Novak Electric, Skyline Construction, Wicks Construction, Stevenson Tree Care, Erdman Engineering, Benzing Surveying, Bruning Rock Products, the Northeast Iowa Metal Works Incorporated, Benneke Construction, and Twin Town Irrigation, as well as local craftspeople, including Kittleson Woodworks, uh, who are here today, I know, as well as Jock Holman, who was one of the team that led the team that carved these beautiful portals that you see here on Mill and Mechanic Street. So thank you to all of those who helped to build this project. You know, I also want to extend my thanks to the people who helped to make this financially possible uh, to do this project. And I want to start off by recognizing actually an early adopter to this project, and that's the representatives of the Paul Pratt and Margaret Olson Pratt Fund of the In Faith Community Foundation. Charlotte Pratt Nordstrom and Henrik are in our audience today. They helped to uh, spearhead the, be the launch of the schematic design for this process, which was the early design process here. So thank you to both of you for that work <laughs> and support. Significantly though, we've also received support from the Margaret A. Cargill Philanthropies, who have been uh, a major supporter of this project and really helped to make this project come to life. So my uh, thanks go out to the Margaret A. Cargill Philanthropies and those staff who helped to, to guide that project for us as well. In addition, we had support from the Iowa Department of Agriculture and Land Stewardship. Uh, that included several water quality initiatives that we uh, had here. I don't know if we have a representative here from the Iowa Department of Agriculture. Way in the back and all. Anyway, thank you to those folks. That helped with some of our water mitigation strategies are on site. And then we also had 
Uh, some local sponsors, Mike Voltmer uh, helped to uh, sponsor the uh, Mill Street entry portal that you see here that we're standing in here today in memory of Rochelle Halverson. And Kate Nelson Rattenberg helped with some of the financial support for this project. Humanities Iowa, the Winnesheet County uh, Community Foundation, and Jeff and Marilyn Roverud and Suzanne and Corey Minnick in honor of Kirsten Roverud Heine for what we are calling the Kirsten Roverud Heine Amphitheater that you'll see later on here today as well. So let's thank you. Thanks to all of the folks who had helped to sponsor this project. So as you can see, this was really a team effort. Uh, it involved many folks, uh, but it came together beautifully with this project. So thank you to not only the, the financial supporters of this project, but also to those of you who laid a hand and played a hand in constructing this project as well. It's a beautiful thing that we can all be proud of. So at this time, I would like to invite our board chair, Ruth Schultz, to the podium to say a few remarks. Thank you, Chris. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, we welcome you here this afternoon and appreciate you celebrating the dedication of Heritage Park with us. I would like to take a moment also to acknowledge the Vesterheim Project team who Chris acknowledged, who managed the outdoor air division renovation. Throughout last summer, while most were working remotely, they were on site, tracking progress, meeting with Jim Jean from Damon Farber or Chuck from Second Nature, making sure the project was on track. I'd like to, get, to give special acknowledgement to Marcia McKelvey, Director of Administration at Vesterheim. She wears many hats. She has deep knowledge of everything at Vesterheim. In addition to being a talented grant writer, she is also a very effective project manager. Marcia, we thank you and appreciate you. <laughs> Trying to see where she is. Oh, there we go. She's in, she's in the back there. So thank you, Marcia. At this time, I would also like to welcome our distinguished guest this afternoon, Mr. Torleiv Opland from the Norwegian Embassy in Washington, D.C. Mr. Opland has a distinguished career of service to Norway, and I'll highlight a few. He began his service to Norway in the Norwegian Army in 1992. He received his law degree from the University of Oslo and went on to serve as a major legal advisor at the Norwegian Ministry of Defense and Norwegian Supreme Military Headquarters. He was first secretary of the Norwegian delegation to NATO in Brussels and also served as the Directory of Security Policy in North America in the Royal Norwegian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. He currently serves as Deputy Chief of Mission at the Norwegian Embassy. We are honored to welcome you this afternoon and so appreciative of this connection to modern Norway. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for this uh, warm welcome. I really appreciate it. Um, Norway and the United States have a really strong relationship. Uh, it's uh, deep rooted, uh, rooted in ties. Uh, and the US is still uh, Norway's closest and most important ally. Uh, we share value and uh, the U.S. Constitution was uh, the model that we also based our Constitution on. Uh, and I think I should start by saying also that uh, uh, our cooperation with the U.S. is very broad today, but it's co the core of that cooperation is uh, and have always been uh, the defense and security cooperation. And it's also important to say that uh, Without the involvement of the U.S. during the Second World War, the darkest times of our nation as an independent state, uh, we probably could not be saved as that. So that, for that, we are uh, really 
uh, grateful. Uh, but uh, maybe the most important element of our cooperation is the connection between the people. Uh, and those connections, they trade back, trace back to the middle of the 19th century, when large numbers of Norwegians made a harrowing voyage across the Atlantic in search of a better life here in America. That must be a really tough decision for many. And you are, most of you, I guess, a result of that voyage and that courage. <laughs> so uh, congratulations to all you all. Uh, yeah, you have some uh, good DNA. Uh, This is my first visit to the Midwest. I uh, came a year ago, and because of the pandemic, this is actually my first flight out of the DC. So I'm very glad to come here uh, on my first trip out of DC. Uh, driving down here from Minneapolis uh, on Thursday, uh, I tried to imagine how uh, the immigrants felt when they came down here. Um, and as I said to someone, uh, I said, uh, it, Certainly, there's food for soil here in, in, in Iowa and in the Midwest. And I've never seen so much corn, and I never see <laughs> as many cornfields as I saw when coming here. And yesterday, I was also driving around in this area, and it's beautiful, uh, but it's vast. Uh, so I imagine those coming from Norway back then must have been uh, mind blown by this, uh, this, uh, this view. Uh, but uh, we can only imagine the struggle to, to settle and to overcome uh, the challenges. So again, they were really brave people. They left something real behind them, but they made this choice and, and uh, they survived. Uh, and today, as a result of the so-called great, uh, great Migration, there are as many uh, Norwegian Americans living in the US as there are Norwegians living in Norway. And this is uh, something we as diplomats always try to tell our American counterparts uh, that we have this great asset of Norwegian Americans living in the US today. And uh, this is a big asset for us uh, as a country. So looking at Westerham's new crown jewel, uh, Heritage Park, I have been uh, looking it out, uh, walking through it. Uh, we take it back in time, back to the great migration. Uh, and we can see how the settlers lived and we can better imagine what their lives were like. It's uh, like uh, stepping into history. And among of the first uh, to come to America in the Great Migration were Reverend William Corrin and his wife Elizabeth, who landed here in 1853. And yesterday I was actually visiting his uh, gravestone at his cemetery, and it was uh, really interesting to see. And all those of the Norwegian names on all those gravestones at that cemetery, it's made, uh, it made a real impression. Um, and those early immigrants, they crossed the Atlantic on the ships like Restoration, uh, the outline of which I learned yesterday, we can see uh, in this very park. Uh, the Corrins were taken in by a pioneer, other pioneer family, the Egge family of Iowa, mother uh, and father and two children. And this is the house, I have not yet been inside it, the Egge family shared uh, with the Corrins so showing them great uh, kindness and generosity despite the hardship of the, uh, such uh, cramped quarters i think we can say uh, so that's uh, i'm looking forward to going into that and uh, i congratulate congratulate the museum's founders for their foresight in preserving uh, this humble monument to the human spirit i've been uh, toured around the museum i'm i'm really impressed that's something really special and yeah we can't find something like it uh, but i also want to thank the new generation and the current generation generations that are uh, maintaining uh, these stories and 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 bringing them on to to new generations that is uh, really important to us as well uh, and the corrents as you know uh, went on to help found another iowa institution the, the Luther College, which I've been visiting today. And again, you can't find that kind of campus in Norway. It's really impressive. So that has also formed an, in a powerful and intellectual link between uh, uh, our nations since the beginning of the Civil War. So 
to conclude, the many years have passed since the Great Migration, but um, you should know that the courage of those migrants um, still makes people in Norway very proud. And coming here and seeing with my own eyes uh, that Norway is very, very much still present in your culture, in your minds, uh, that, is, uh, uh, that makes a real impression. Uh, so um, it kind of feels like coming home to the country I love, Norway. Uh, you have a lot of Norway here. That is something. <laughs> so thank you for welcoming me and every other country fellow man of Norwegian uh, to this place and to the Midwest. Really uh, appreciate it. And good luck with uh, the important work that you will continue here at Westerheim. Thank you again. Thank you, Mr. Oblum, for those wonderful remarks. And this is always will be your second home, and we honor you for that. So before we close, and I know Chris has the closing remarks for today, I did, wanted to take a moment to thank Chris Johnson for the vision that he had with this project. This has been a project of the heart for him, and he has really been, um, it's, he, he has seen this from the start, and it, it's a transformative project for Westerheim, and we appreciate all that he has done to drive this pro project forward and see it through. So on behalf of the Board of Trustees, but all of us here today, thank you, Chris. We appreciate you. It was really a team effort, so. <laughs> um, I wanted to also just say one other note of thanks here. Um, you know, this is a, a great addition to Vesterheim, but it's also a great addition to the community of Decora. And uh, I know in the last year as this project was being constructed, we had many people walk through this site a lot of sidewalk superintendents checking on the project <laughs> and, and monitoring its progress. Um, but it's also an asset to the Decorah community. And I also wanted to extend my thanks to the city of Decorah, represented here by Mayor Lorraine Borowski. Uh, they played a key role also in uh, helping to all the necessary paperwork to get this going and their support as well of this project. And uh, I think this is, like I said, not only an asset for the museum, but it's really an asset for Decorah as well. And uh, so thank you to the city of Decorah as well.